If we try to pull the curtain back to see what Jesus was thinking towards the end of his ministry, we cannot know everything running through Jesus' mind. But there is one final concern that we overhear in the prayer that he says before he goes off to the garden and then is arrested and eventually crucified. That Jesus is concerned that leaving will lead to forgetting. That once Jesus left, the disciples might forget all that they had learned and experienced, that they just might lose sight of the purpose of Jesus' ministry and now their ministry, that they might not remember what it means to work together or to reach out to others, that Jesus is worried they will feel all alone. And we hear Jesus' emotions in the midst of his prayer. That we all have prayers that we can say with ease. That we can pray them when we are busy washing the dishes or sitting there at a red light on our way to work. That we don't have to strain too much to voice our daily concerns. But then there are those prayers that stop us in our tracks. They grip the very ground of our being, and we cannot do anything but pray. That we feel them throughout our entire body that it's hard to even put them into words like the Spirit groaning for creation. And we find them woven throughout our entire lives. Like the family celebrating their son's birthday party, gathered around the kitchen table with loved ones, everyone singing as loud as they can, even though most of them are completely off key, but it just sounds full of joy. Everyone's wearing those silly party hats, but no one is embarrassed. That They are singing as the cake comes into the room, candles burning brightly, and their son, the birthday boy, grinning ear to ear that it is life at its best. But then later that night, his mother is sitting in the quiet moments of the evening, still thinking through everything that day, but she is stopped by the weight of a prayer that will not let her go. That as good as that day was, she cannot let go of how hard the last six weeks have been as her son had been bullied at school. And every fiber of her being wants to take the goodness of that day into the days to come. That even though our prayers may focus on different concerns, we know the feeling of that kind of prayer. And I think that is the kind of prayer dripping with emotion and concern that Jesus prays at the very end of his life. That he is worried that the disciples will feel lost in the midst of feeling alone. Loneliness, of course, is not a new problem. It is as old as creation itself. And it is an odd concern because it can find us in the quiet solitude and stillness of an empty house or right there in the middle of a crowded, noisy room. 
It can tap us on the shoulder and change our day completely. And we find it throughout the different seasons of our lives. At first, maybe we feel it growing up and trying to grow out of that feeling that revisits us throughout our lives where we just do not feel like we fit in the world around us. What is it that we have to offer? We just don't feel comfortable in our own skin knowing what it is we are to do. That someone could give us a sheet of paper and ask us to write a list as simple as all of our gifts, big and small, but because loneliness has pulled up a chair next to us, we could stare at that piece of paper for hours unsure of what to write down. Or perhaps it finds us later in life where we are dealing with new limitations and adjustments which eventually find us all. Where if we were courageous enough to say so and strong enough to say so, we feel more like a burden then we do a gift to those around us. That loneliness has a way of distorting the mirror in front of us that when we see our reflection, the only value we see is in our past accomplishments. Or maybe it finds us in the busiest of days, in that season of life where we can name our responsibilities. We feel the weight of the people who depend on us and all that we are working for. But loneliness can still leave us with little more than doubt. Doubtful that all that we are doing and all that we are working for amounts to very much in this world. Jesus is concerned that the disciples will feel alone. At the beginning of the book of Acts, though, we find a grace as old as the problem of loneliness, where the disciples are facing that moment where Jesus will leave, and they're looking around asking, what do we do next? Is this the time, they said? Is this the time where everything will be fulfilled? Where God will right all wrongs and heal all brokenness? Everything that we have been working towards, everything that Jesus describes as the kingdom of God. They asked that question because uncertainty is like throwing gasoline on the fire of loneliness. And Jesus said little more than the time is for none of us to know. But rest assured, you will never be alone. So the disciples started where Jesus had started. That Jesus started by calling people together, joining with others. So the disciples gathered with one another in order to fill that spot that was once held by Judas, naming Matthias. That they started where Jesus had started, knowing that they were not alone. That our prayers call us to join with others, to connect with others, knowing that others are carrying similar burdens that we are. It's like that family vacation where we are standing in front of that iconic fountain where all of the other tourists have also gathered to get that iconic photo because every 30 minutes on the second that fountain shoots water 75 feet in the air and we look down and it's 1258 
So we grab an unsuspecting innocent bystander and thrust our camera into his hands and say, will you take our family photo? And then we cram together in front of this fountain, making sure everybody's collar is straight and warning everybody, almost threatening everybody, make sure you smile. This is our one and only shot at this picture. And seconds before one o'clock, we remind the photographer, make sure you zoom in because we're thinking we don't want all these strangers in the picture that's going to go on our Christmas card this year. But perhaps our prayers call us to move in the other direction. They call us to zoom out to widen the picture, to see everything going on in the background and all of the people that are around us to look beyond what is in the forefront of the picture. To remember that we are never alone. That others do carry similar burdens that we do. That our prayers call us to mourn, to lament, to forgive, to give thanks, and to move beyond our loneliness. To trust that as we reach out, there will be those to connect with who understand. For if even Jesus prayed these kinds of prayers, we can rest assured that we will find the presence of Christ in them. Perhaps we shy away from them because they are so overwhelming that we are overcome by those concerns, that we don't know what to do next or what to do with them. A good friend of mine told me a story about his family going to the beach years ago when his daughter was younger. And late in the afternoon when the tide finally went out, his daughter discovered as the water revealed hundreds of starfish lying there on the beach. And she was concerned. She was worried they would not make it because they weren't in the water. So she started to pick them up and throw them into the ocean. Now her father knew it was late in the evening. They really needed to get back and have dinner. But she had that look in her eye, that passion, that he knew better not to get in the way. And as she's throwing these starfish out into the water, a runner comes down the beach and stops, sort of shocked by this little girl saving the starfish and said, what are you doing? And she said, I'm saving the starfish. And he looked down at how many were on the ground and he thought, you'll never save all of them. Well, she had that look in her eye. And she leaned down and picked up one of them and said to him, I saved that one. She picked up another one and said to him, I saved that one. Picked up a third one and threw it in the water and said, I saved that one. That our prayers, as overwhelming as they can feel, call us to take one Step at a time. Leaning on the support of others and looking for the presence of God. And it may take time. But as we step back and widen the picture, we discover the presence of God sitting behind us and the support of the community of faith behind us.
that we can begin where Jesus began. Amen.